And first is that uh, there is a group of people who's been working really hard to get this conference done. Those are the people who you've seen on registration, you've seen them in airport, you've seen them uh, translating, you've seen them leading the buses. You know, this is the best part of Estonia. And they do this for absolutely free, so I think that the least thing we can do, if, um, if everybody from Estonian conference team who's in the room, could you just stand up a little bit? And Thomas, you too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just stand up so we could give you a decent thank you applause. Agnes is a lady back there. She's really tired, but she's the one who's been organizing the whole thing. <laughs> so whenever you have free hugs, you can, you can dis dispose of them. Uh, give it to Agnes. She will deserve it, definitely. Um, there's the other team we got. And this is the team who actually brought all of you to the World Cleanup 2012. This is the, the regional team. Those are mostly ladies. They do it after their work. They, they get on with their lives, and in the middle, they squeeze somehow talking to the countries they've never heard of. This is completely crazy what they do. I couldn't do it, but they do it. So um, anybody from, uh, from our regional team, the, the bold and totally crazy girls, could you just stand up for a moment? We give you an applause too. Frankly, I don't know how they do it, but uh, somehow they, they do it and uh, just, well, you see how fun it is. Uh, we have a few more people in the team. Uh, those are the, the partners team, the finance team, the IT team, and um, you know, people who have been behind this doing the, the hard work. You never see them. But uh, some of them are here, I know. Eva is here. She's been the, the, the manager of picking up most of the people into the team. So all of the others. Just <laughs> And the, um, the, the knowledge team, and Maria is there. Maria is talking to all the partners. She's also, don't be ashamed, yeah. <laughs> Who else we got here? Um, the, the IT team people and the, um, the rest of the teams, just, you know, from Estonia, the guys who have been putting your effort in, just stand up for a second so we could give you applause. You totally deserve it. Thank you. The, uh, yeah. <laughs> the clean world, the world cleanup 2012. Um, I've been thinking a lot what is it what we are actually doing in the last uh, three years, and it's, uh, it's been something, it's hard to place because um, as you've seen from the energy, we're not exactly in the waste management business. So it's gotta be something else. And um, it's been bothering me for a long time. What is it actually? And um, speaking to the, the other teams and, and, and feeling the energy we, uh, we have locally here and also in the, in the countries, it, um, it might be a bold thing to state, but I think we're, we're somehow on the, uh, on the brink of the cultural shift in, uh, in humanity. It is, uh, it is perhaps a bold statement, but uh, I'd like to elaborate a bit on this. And if you'd allow me to, to take you to the, to the journey to the future a little bit. So how could this happen? That this will actually um, be a reality, the clean world. See, what we've done is, uh, I think in the uh, last 200 years of an uh, industrial revolution, 
we've been hiding behind the uh, the fact that um, to get our scares taken care of and, and, and to get ourselves in a safe position, we've, um, we've tried to use the material stuff to, to guard us. We built magnificent technologies, you know, we built big walls in some countries, and we've used those means as an excuse to, um, to really um, not to deal with the causes of, uh, of the problems we got. And the, um, it suddenly struck me that uh, why we're in, in such a decent, uh, not, not decent shape in a, in a world as, as we are now is that pretty much all of us are scared. And um, you know what, if I'm, uh, I'm thinking what I'm feeling in this room, there is not much of a scare left. So why is that so, that uh, in, in this room we don't scare, we don't, we're not afraid and, and outside people are afraid? And you think about the, the situation where we're um, without climate-wise and, and the waste situation worldwide. As of today, we're, we're putting 9 billion tons of carbon into the air every year. And we're putting about 1 billion tons of waste into the different places in the world. So this is, uh, this is a pretty big amount. And obviously, we've seen that you know, governments have been trying to deal with this carbon thing. They've had a meeting in 1992 in Rio de Janeiro, and they started this whole process of controlling the carbon. And if you look back now, from 92 to 2012, the amount of carbon in the air has actually increased 38%. So every year we have climate conferences and 15,000 people get together and they discuss how do you deal with this problem, how do you exactly get it done with, and they have proposals and you know, nice things. But the problem doesn't go away. It means uh, there's something what they do wrong. And what I'm, uh, I'm thinking is that the climate change would be a fact, and um, the way we've tried to deal with this was a plan A, like deal with governments, control the emissions from the uh, you know, power plants. But uh, you know that the alphabet has more letters, except A. There, there are 20, 25 more letters, so perhaps we could use a plan B to deal with it. And what, uh, what occurred to me is that uh, the problem is not that people cannot agree upon it, but the problem is that, or the, or the problem is not in this, that uh, the, the, this whole climate change is too big of an issue. I think it's not. I think what, uh, what actually happens is that the climate change is uh, too small of the problem. See, if you think about the huge problems you could face, I could picture it like a tsunami. And if you are going to have a tsunami coming at you, you will not start discussion with your friend who's going to run first or, or how fast should I run. You just run as fast as you can and you get, you know, either you're dead or, or you're not. So obviously, this climate change hasn't been a much of a problem. And it hasn't been either a big inspiration because it's negative. It's something of a problem which would come unless you don't do something. It's like, you know, putting, you know, having some obligation to do something. It's not, a, not the way uh, I would see people are good at. So what I'm hoping is that uh, if, we'd, uh, if we'd get people to move for a dream instead of solving a problem. And I hope that uh, the clean world would be a much better dream than having a problem of the climate change. So um, if we get that as a dream into the people's heads, I think we can solve this problem as a, as a byproduct. Because 35% um, of the uh, CO2 emissions, the carbon emissions, they come from goods what we make and use. And this is directly, but indirectly, most of it comes from us. 
So what I'm thinking is, is most of the stuff, what do we make? We make because we try to find security and love. But this is not the answer, obviously, as, as you guys know. So why do we do this? This is, this is something we've tried for hundreds of years, and we've, uh, we've been getting pretty good at this, the wrong way to do it. So my hope is that what if we could, uh, what if we could do differently now? What if we could really uh, have the dream of the clean planet as an inspiration for those other people? It, um, it wouldn't be that, uh, that difficult, I would think. All this would need to do is that uh, we would have the atmosphere we have here to spread it. I, I don't think this is, this is too complicated. I think this, um, this can be done. But this wouldn't be just telling people that please don't litter, please don't do this. Obviously, you guys are doing the execution. And you know that uh, it takes some measures to, to get things done and, and get some deadlines and actions. So what I'm uh, thinking is that all of you have very different backgrounds. You know, we have people here who don't have the waste management at all at home. We have people like Germany, which has like a clockwork waste management. Uh, we have different beliefs, we have different traditions. But uh, let me tell you, I, uh, I feel like I am uh, at home here. So there is a, uh, there's probably something which, uh, which connects us more than uh, those traditions or, or countries. And I think this is the way to, uh, to clean the planet. I think the role of countries has been getting slowly uh, smaller and smaller because countries were created to fight each other. And this is why we uh, had them in the first place. And I don't think the, the countries are good to solve those problems like waste or, or climate change. I think all, all what countries would do is they will look for the self-interest. And um, who else than the communities of the world would look for the interest of all of us? Plus, um, I can tell you, I've been to United Nations building. This here does not compare. <laughs> What, um, what they do there is they bore you to death with the talks. And everybody is taking out his claims that this is my territory and this is my territory. Okay, we can make a deal. And this is sad because by having the means like this between countries, discussions, deals, people don't feel that they are true. They always do compromises with themselves. And it, uh, at least for me, it was really, um, it was painful. I felt that this is the best part of the planet where supposed to be good things happening. And I think those good things happened in the United Nations after the Second World War, perhaps, when we had a good treaties, and, and this was the time. But right now, I don't think we have, a, we have the way to, to go solve those problems through countries. I mean, if, if there is a problem in, in one country, then obviously, like we have in Brazil, we already have an issue with Russia maybe trying to connect them. And I think this is the way we're going to solve this problem. If, um, if we are lucky enough to get companies aboard, and there are companies who are obviously big enough and who are, uh, who are using technologies and, and who have the tools to shape up the world, I think then uh, no country can stop us. I just see the true power we have through the social media, through the networks we have. I think in this room, with people we can connect to, they already maybe, you know, 100 million or so. And what does it take? I mean, it takes a bunch of volunteers to organize a group. You know, you guys come here, who comes hitchhiking, who comes with a plane? And all it takes is that we feel you're true in the heart. And, um, well, I can be uh, honest with you also. I, I'm really happy about it, what we're doing here. And this is, I never imagined a career in this waste business, but uh, I've, we've been uh, working with helping you guys and, uh, and Estonia for four years. And I think this is the, the best part of my life. 
So there is, there is something else to it, and, and I'd really like you to, to carry this message to, to your homes. If you do that, then I think we can, uh, we can be successful. But there is also a practical side to all of this. See, um, if we really want to get the world clean, it wouldn't be enough if we just uh, infect people with this, what was that complicated disease you invented in Slovenia? I don't remember it. Yes, oh, yeah, I got it. <laughs> what um, what needs to be done is, the, I think, there are some common actions we could try to do worldwide. Some simple things which we would discuss tomorrow on a conference in the brainstorms. And I know everybody of you have uh, problems at home where you, you need to do this and that and, and you know, you're very focused, which is good. But believe me, if we were to be successful as cleaning up the planet, we would need to do a bit of it together. And um, we have some thoughts. I would uh, really welcome you to, to the workshops tomorrow to, to reflect on this, try to get better ones, so that for Sunday we could have something resembling like a platform where we can uh, start pushing slowly. Um, there are a few things there, what we've been thinking so far. First is a plastic issue. I don't know, you know it, but not, but uh, the most of the, uh, most of the, the trash we're, uh, we're finding in oceans, this is plastic. So uh, it gets there because most of the plastic we use is uh, single use. I mean, it shocked me that 80% um, of all the goods we make on Earth are used one time only, and most of this is plastic. Right now, the, the, the way the system works in recycling in the world is that there are seven types of plastic, and the system has been designed by plastic companies. And uh, funnily enough, there are some sorts of plastic you can recycle, but some of them you cannot. Like PVC, this is very hard. But uh, it, what's even more funny is that seventh group of this plastic types is called the others. So. I'm thinking right now we're in a situation in a world where the oil is ending and we're pumping it up ever quicker. We're using you know, all of this oil either for transportation or making plastic, which is toxic by itself, the process. We're making goods which are one time use only and then we throw it somewhere. It doesn't make sense. It, um, it looks to me that this process should be uh, different. And um, one way would be very bold one, to ban the plastic which we use just once, disposable plastic. Just ban it. Not just plastic bags, not just cups, but ban the plastic which you use once. It's going to be a hard fight, I'm frank with you. There are companies like Dow Chemicals and others who would um, not like it, but there is no other way how we could clean Lake Baikal or, or the seas or, or you know, coast of Ghana if we keep producing plastic the same way. We just, you know, we, we can't allow it. We can't give it out in shops. We should do it different. The second thing is we should um, agree upon the system where the only plastic whatever gets made can be recycled or reused better yet. So why do they make some sorts of plastic which is impossible to use later? I mean, you can always burn it, but it's like a stupid thing to get the house heated by uh, using furniture for that. It's, it's not the way um, nature works. So I think we could push for that kind of solution. There's a third thing we were thinking about is that if you'd structure the economy properly, you can have a waste turned into the resource at home. So if you have a cup, you drink it, and you put it in the right place, technically you can sell it. But we don't have the good systems for that in the world. And um, you know, we're discussing with the World Bank, perhaps we could uh, 
come up with some kind of a system for developing countries, and they could fund it, hopefully. I don't know. So what I'm thinking is that we would need some kind of a radical restructuring of uh, at-home waste management. So you could have a smart bin somehow, you know, it's not the technology, but some, some kind of a sorting and a limited amount of different plastics you could get. So you put it in the right place and your village can sell it. You don't need an expensive machinery for reproducing something out of it because it's already the right plastic in the right place. Those both things, I think we, would, we could reduce the worldwide waste closer to half because the plastic is what stays. And why this plastic is, um, is important to, to get on to is that uh, when it gets small, you know, it breaks down in ocean, it, um, it gets used as a food in ocean. And um, the time it travels, it attaches some toxins to it. So those toxic bits of tiny plastic, they get into the fish, and eventually we all eat fish. But um, luckily we don't eat this plastic, but uh, the toxic pieces which are attached to the plastic, they get deposited in the fat of the fish. And eventually we eat this fish, so it's going to get deposited in us. There are things uh, plastic industry rather don't talk about. Because this is so overwhelming problem, I mean, everybody uses plastic at some times. And obviously, there are, there are types of plastic, you don't have that problem. But, but most of the soft plastics, they also have um, additives which, you know, <clears throat> can work like uh, uh, hormones. <clears throat> so what I'm thinking is that if, if, if there could be uh, some kind of a reflection tomorrow about it, this plastic issue would be one to, to work with. Obviously, um, like uh, Heike said, composting in, in, in most of the world would be uh, a decent way to go. And I think we should <coughs> uh, try to introduce some ways of using the, the biodegradable waste locally. You don't need to ship it anywhere. You can just compost it. You know, it takes a few months. Easy designs. There's nothing complicated about it. So composting would be uh, the other thing. I think perhaps... Uh, Advertising would be uh, the sector we could touch. <clears throat> I'm thinking, why should this uh, be allowed to advertise something which is not sustainable? I mean, you cannot go to TV and tell people to shoot each other. It's, it's not a decent way to do it. But uh, if you say that buy this stuff, which is um, discarded somewhere and has no further use, why, why we should do that? So perhaps there should be some, uh, some regulations on what do we actually sell to our young people. Because this is how the uh, you know, people start to think. They just watch those ads and this is the way they uh, behave after that. <clears throat> I think there is a, another uh, bad side effect to the advertising is that <clears throat> normally it makes you feel that you're imperfect. Because the, the advertising tells you that because you don't have this, you're not good, you, ha you should buy this. And uh, <clears throat> in many ways we're... Ah, oh, excellent. Thank you. In many ways this is, um, this is hampering the, the, <clears throat> the freedom of people. <clears throat> There's the last thing I'm, I'm, I'm going to bore you with, and this is um, a tax issue. <clears throat> I think um, right now if you live somewhere in the, um, not the wealthiest parts in the world. If you want to live really green, like you wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to be the green person. And you do the green choices in the shop and you, you do everything to save the planet. It's, it's getting more expensive for you, isn't it? So how is that so that if you want to be good, it's a penalty attached to this? So I don't think this makes sense because when we talk about sustainable life, how come that this is more expensive? I mean, people cannot afford it. Uh, this is the contradiction. So we're thinking of um, introducing a, the green sales tax, which would mean the regular sales tax we have in the countries. I mean, most of the countries have sales tax. Do, is there anybody who uh, doesn't have sales tax? You know, this is, what is it? Yeah. Yeah, VAT. Everybody has it. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, there are some places we don't have it. But the, the general idea with the greening tax would be that if the product is uh, with a lesser footprint ecologically, you would have a smaller amount of tax on this. Technically, this is doable because everything you get in a supermarket, you get a beep and you have a barcode. And there is an organization worldwide who's tracking all this thing and technically it's doable. So th the idea would be that we could level the scales. If you want to be green, you feel that this is the way to live, it, it shouldn't be more expensive. And the other guys who are lazier, who don't care about the environment, would pay for this. Sounds fair to me. So, if, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, if, if that kind of a tax reform could locally be done, so we're thinking now, perhaps we're lucky to, to talk to European Commission about it. If, if this could be done, this is local thing, it would push everybody in a country to greener and greener until we're actually getting to the process where, you know, most of the stuff is green or very expensive, nobody would buy it. But also, I think what is at least that important is if, if that kind of a tax reform would happen, the companies are not stupid. Right now, companies are listening like, oh, what's going to happen? Do they do this and that? And they, they look, look on those climate conferences and they say, they're still talking, nothing's going to happen. If we could send a clear message that we as a people, we're looking for that kind of change, the green products would come much quicker. The companies would be um, encouraged to invest in technology where they can shift their wasteful ways into the better ones because they don't want to be fools. They want to be also in front and they want to shine. So I think those simple steps, we could really, you know, if we agree, maybe there are some other ways. Maybe somebody would come up with the other ideas. We're really looking forward to it. That's why we, we're here. But um, I believe what's important is if we could get some grasp, what do we collectively could push for, you wouldn't imagine how quickly the world would change. This is just, you know, it's unbelievable. So please, you know, come up with the ideas, join the, the work groups tomorrow and, uh, and we'll see. Because um, once we agree upon something, if you can pitch in a little bit later on, it's really, uh, it's really something what could, uh, what could change this world. Good. Thank you.